بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه أما بعد علوم القرآن We are at the uh, bait or verse 154 154 the chapter أمثال القرآن أمثال القرآن The parable in the Quran. I'm sorry. I think I showed. You, I told you where to find that in that book. Yeah, I don't have it with me. But we'll go step by step here. The book of uh, As Suyuti is a reference, as I said. It's more reference for like you know all the hadith uh, and saying of the scholar reported on the Ulum al Quran. But here we take like by subject, by subject, explore it, and then someone can have a reference to read more. But uh, what we get in the lecture is enough, inshallah, for to know about the subject and for the exams. The, the book is for more study, inshallah, and more like to, to clarify more things, to understand more, inshallah. Huh? يقول المصنف تشبيه شيء بالذي في حكمه فهو المثال ولتنى من علمه تشبيه شيء بالذي في حكمه to compare something or to uh, have you know the parable or to resemble something to another thing you know بالذي في حكمه فهو المثال with the thing that it has they share the same thing for example, let's say the bottle looks like, you know, a shape that, you know, say, oh, it looks like a bottle. So when you look, you said, what is the common point that they have? They say the shape. So for, there's, you know, there's al-mushabbah, wal-mushabbah bihi wa wajhu al-shabbah. Al-mushabbah is the thing that I say, this looks like so this device looks like al mushabbah bihi like what so that's the thing that i'm referring to and when i say this looks like this so there's a point there's a, you know a common point that's we call it wajh al shabah or the figure of what what make them to be resembling each other so this is what we say تشبيه شيء بالذي في حكمه فهو المثال والتنن من علمه وثلث الأنواع للأمثال وهكها مذكورة كالتالي The parable in the Quran Allah سبحانه وتعالى in the Quran as we're going to mention He give example, He give parable So the parable to help us understand the meaning to help us understand the message to help us have the uh, the image or the to to transform the message into image so it will be like more striking more strong in our understanding um, you see uh, listening to a story will be more striking to see it in image you know so to have also examples of things that are not spiritual, non-tangible. To compare them to something tangible, it gives you like more striking understanding and clear understanding. So that's the parable in the Quran. So the three types that he mentioned, we've, we have the parable called Bittasrihi, and then Al-Kamina, and then Al-Mursala. So three types of parable. التصريح الكامنة المرسلة We're going to explain them all قال وثلث الأنواع للأمثال وهكها مذكورة كالتالي and have know that there's three category or types of parables and here are you know uh, mentioned as follow the first one is الأمثال بالتصريح للمدح والتذكير والتجريح to compliment to praise 
to remind and to tajrih to you know to 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 let's say you know to to clarify the ill point in some people or in some action so at tasrih mean as sarih as sarih is to see in the ayah the mention of the verb their example is like this their parable is like this so you read it so you know that allah is giving you an example so here for example like in surah al-baqarah ayah 17 qala kamathaluhum kamathali their example uh, i will bring uh, the uh, some of the translation so i read it from the uh, directly from the translation okay here I'm very good so a 17 from surah al-baqarah it says here yeah, their example is that of one who kindled the fire he said in the other terms, their likeness, their simulated. Okay, so metheluhum, kemetheli. Their likeness is the likeness of one who can then fire. Then when it's lighted all around him, Allah took away their light. Their example is that of one who kindled a fire, uh, but when it illuminated uh, what was around him, Allah took away their light. So this is an example. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you an example. This example of la ilaha illallah. Mathalun ka mathali alladhi istawqada naran falamma adaat ma hawlahu dhahaba Allah bi nurihi. The example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he gave them the la ilaha illallah and the light of la ilaha illallah illuminate everything around them. But then they blocked the light by their hypocrisy. So, who took the light is because of hypocrisy, Allah took away the light from their heart. So, it's because of their ill doing. So, the example, imagine someone, he has bringing a fire and he put a butter light and everyone like has the light. So, the light is being given already to you. And someone, subhanAllah, has been withdrawing the light. So, withdrawing the light is like becomes like blind. That's why قال سمم بكم عميون after that they deaf they blind they speechless etc. Why? Because they cannot see this light. It's been taken away because of their action. So the parable here is like you see someone who's uh, kindling a fire, and then these people they had it and then it's been taken away from them because they cannot see it anymore. They became blind, and this example, Subhanallah, it gives you like. Uh, more uh, enlightenment to the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so literally Allah takes away the light from their heart so they cannot see anything even though the light is is around them is being already kindled and lit so this is at tasrih so tasrih here in this example it means that Allah said the likeness or their likeness their example so the example the mention of the example is mentioned in this ayah so that's what we call at tasrihu al kaminu al kaminu al kaminu is like embedded into the sentence or the ayah but it's not uh, openly said that is mithal uh, example we mentioned last time. Uh, example, Surah At-Tawbah, Ayah 109. Surah At-Tawbah, Ayah 109. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about the masjid of uh, Al-Dirar, the one built by the Munafiqeen, to make it as a place where they can plot against the Prophet ﷺ and the companion and the believers. 
So Allah is making the comparison of both of them. Qal is uh, then is one who led the foundation of his building on righteousness with fear from Allah and seeking his approval better or one who led the foundation of his building on the edge of a bank about to collapse so it will it collapsed with him into the fire of hell so this is an example you're using the example of tangible thing building but the foundation is spiritual foundation righteousness this foundation is is like you know on a bank like you know falling like on on an edge of a hill he's going to fall so this is is a masjid you can see it like a building as i think i mentioned this year last week but the example here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say the example of masjid al dirar is like a building built on the top of a hill on each edge and almost going to collapse and when he collapses he's going to fall in hellfire he didn't say that he gave you for you the the picture the image to have the whole scene but he's describing for you a spiritual matter and more than uh, you know a tangible matter so here the what we call this one al mithalu al kaminu al mithalu or al mithal al kamin al kamin is being like folded or like uh, uh, is 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 mentioned without mention i mean it is an example without uh, openly say and stipulate the word of example let's see if uh, if i can get you a, a word closer inshallah a kind of hidden hmm? yeah uh, uh, in arabic you say came in muhtafin kind of buried hidden um, concealed implicit implicit will be the best one yeah and implicit so implicit the example or the parable is implicit not sariha openly mentioned yeah that implicit is the right word طيب. the types of the amthal he said قال للمدح والتذكير والتجريح so there's types i mean the purpose of the method um, the purpose of the method we have um, or like the types of the amthal in the quran there's amthal like symbolic one symbolic like uh, it being given, for example, Ramziya, uh, Methal Ramzi, he give you like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, example, uh, for example, uh, birds speaking, ant speaking. But the bird and the ant, it's like to inspire a great example of great value and virtue. Like Al Hudhud. He's speaking to Sulaiman, telling him the story of the people of Saba. And he said, How Allah subhanahu wa the knowledge of Allah yukhruju al-khab'a fi samawati wal ard. And then, qala, Allah yajudu. Do, should not they, do not they worship? How come they did, they don't, you know, make sujood to Allah rabbu al-arsh al So those, the speaking of a bird is an example for us. An example is a message of inspiration. You see, subhanAllah, it'll, make, it'll keep you thinking. You say, subhanAllah, a bird had this knowledge? I mean, a bird who has to think and the way he, he speaks, you know, in his dimension, in his word, because al-khab'a is the grain that, he, that he's concerned, that his food, that how he gave the, uh, you know, the attribute of Allah. He gave them as example in, in, within his own life, within his own dimension. Said Qala Aladi Yalm, the one who knows who can bring you forth this grain is either from the heaven or the earth, you know. 
So that's example we call it Ramzi. Example, uh, Ramzi. Symbolic. Um, you can have uh, another. Uh, Uh, also, uh, Ramzi kind of like uh, a kind of a metaphor, you know, um, a figure of speech, figurative, uh, kind of that. Okay. The second, so look, we said at tasrih and al kamil Okay, that's uh, one. But this is the types of how they are being done. The types. The first one is Ramziyun. Let's first, before I go here, I'll, I'll mention that there's the three. I, I show, tell you what are the three. You said uh, to not get, you know, uh, in more details before. So he said, At-Tasrihu, Al-Musarrah, Al-Kaminu, and then Qal Al-Mursal, Al-Mursal. Al-Mursalu, it's like it comes a whole statement, but kind of an example, giving you like kind of a quote, like uh, we, we say, Mithel, you know, uh, a quote, sometimes a quote give you a lot of meaning, uh, you know, without saying anything. He said like, uh, um, for example, here, he gave the example, Surah Hud, Ayah 81, Qala alaysa subhu bi qareeb. Alaysa as subhu biqareeb is not the dawn is near, which is mean this is an example of anyone who's in grief, anyone who's in problem. They tell him, inshallah, he's going to be good, you know. So, to give the parable of uh, the solution, the relief is near, to say, Alaysa as subhu biqareeb is not after every long night the dawn will come up. So to say only that, uh, someone when he's listening in this condition, he understands that he's not talking about the dawn that is going to come for the next day. He's talking about his situation. So the long night is the problem that he's in. The coming up of the dawn is the solution, is the relief. So this is what we call mursala, sand. It's like statement is there. It gives you like a whole, you know, a parable of one situation, like... Uh, uh, here, uh, Lut alayhi salam, being with the, with the angel, his guest, he didn't know that he's angel, and his people, you know, uh, you know, fully and completely astray, uh, want to, uh, you know, to attack his own guest. So when they told him about the glad tidings that they're going to save him, they said, alayhi subhu bi qareeb. So don't worry, it's going to be everything done by the, by the done. So. Uh, also, a figure of speech to say, like in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 41, Qudiya al-amru alladhi fihi tastaftiyan. Qudiya al-amru, let's say here. The Surah, I said, uh, Yusuf. So did Yusuf, Ayah 41. قضي الأمر الذي فيه. This is the case judged concerning which you both did inquire. Uh, he said here, uh, have been decreed that matter whereof you twain do inquire. Uh, the fact you say has been decreed the matters like it's it's been judged uh, it becomes like mithel people when they 
speak and uh, and they have like dispute and argument and someone want to stop this whole argument to say qudiya al amru alladhi fi tastafiyan you know this is as like has been decreed the matter that uh, you are inquiring so like let's stop here so it becomes like this ayah as an example and parable to to have things settled or like to say this enough talk that's it things like that so this is we call it al uh, amthila al mursala but more benefit i will uh, share with you about al mithal fi al quran just to say what are some of the example and what are the benefit of the mithal we said after this type of amthila the way that is done uh, the, the the way it was done i said you know some figurative as the example of the uh, animal that i mentioned like the birds and the ants uh, the second one uh, as at uh, tamthil al qasasi so you find the style is to be done through uh, narration through stories so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, tell the prophet sallallahu the story of the nation before قال كذلك نقص عليك من أنباء الرسل ما نثبت به فؤادك. so we telling you these examples to like empower and strengthen your heart. so when you listen the example of people before you, Allah سبحانه وتعالى said, do you think that you're going to paradise till reach you the example of people before you? so this example help you as a believer to know. You're not the only one who's enduring difficulties in, the, in your life. I mean, people before you, they had the same difficulties. So to help someone be patient, to help someone, you know, uh, be like, you know, uh, more, uh, help him to persevere on the path, etc. So at tamthil al-qasasi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I can read for you uh, the ayah, uh, which is very clear, the ayah in Surah At-Tahreem, the ayah in Surah At-Tahreem, the ayah number 10, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give us the example of uh, the wife of Nuh and the wife of Lut, the wife of Nuh and the wife of Lut, and I would say example here, and this is Mithalun Musarrah, Mithalun Musarrah, I mean, the word of Mithal is mentioned in it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say here, قال, Allah presents an example of those who disbelieve the wife of Nuh and the wife of Lut. Okay? Allah sets forth an example. Um, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, and Allah presents as an example of those who believe the wife of Fir'aun. And Maryam, binti Imra. Hmm? So this is example of narration of people people before us. Then they have the example what we call at tamthilu at tabi'i. So the first one from among these three types, the way how it's done is done ramziyan like the way we mentioned like a figure of speech uh, is done through narration stories before and the third one they call tamthil on tabi'i a natural exam you know parable and what we mean by here is how can you uh, compare or give the example of something intangible with something tangible for example, Allah give you the example of the life of this world. Uh, Surah, uh, for example, Yunus, Ayah 24. Surah Yunus, you can write the Ayat so you can refer to them, inshallah, when you want to, to review. Surah Yunus, Ayah 24. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given us the example of the hayat dunya Verily, the likeness of the worldly life is as. So here, Mithal 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you example from the nature, from the creation around us, for something that we live. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, look at the rain when it's poured down on the earth and the vegetation comes out and said, and this is the way how you're going to come out in the day of, re of the resurrection. So he give you like a natural example, something from the nature that when you look at it, it reminds you, subhanAllah, your own life. So this here, what is the life of this world? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, verily the likeness of this worldly life is as the water which we send down from the sky. So by it arises uh, the intermingled produce of the earth of which man and cattle eat until when the earth is clad with its adornment and is beautified. And its people think that they have all the power of disposal over it. Our command reaches it by night or day, and we made it like a clean mound harvest. As if it had not flourished yesterday. This is the life, subhanAllah. This is exactly the life. People want to see the vegetation, they think that they have control over it. So Allah لَجَعَنَّهُ in the future. Why? Because people when they see the vegetation, they think that it's the harvest, they control it. When subhanAllah, after seeing it and that feel of controlling it, which give them like vanity, feeling of vanity and, and arrogance, Allah's order come to take it all. That's the life of the dunya. People, they have money, they have health, and they feel that they control everything. They are going to live forever. And the next day, someone has a stroke. كَأَنَّهَا لَمْ As Allah subhanahu wa لَمْ تَغْنَى بِالْأَمْسِ It's like it was not flourished. Like this person never existed before. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala هَلْ تَسْمَعُوا لَهُمْ حِسًّا أَوْ تَسْمَعُوا لَهُمْ كَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ هل تحس لهم تحس منهم من أحد أو تسمع لهم ركزة؟ How many nations and big civilization they lived before? Do you listen to them any sound, or do you feel the presence of any one of them? It's like they didn't exist in their time. They feel controlling everything. Everything is under the control. Now. Remember, subhanAllah, the spring, how everything is green, getting high, and then subhanAllah, in the fall, everything dies. When you see them in the winter, dry branches, it's like they never flourished before. SubhanAllah. That's exactly the life of the dunya. So the example that Allah gave us from the nature, as example to help us have more meaning to our life, to, to be our life around you. You can look at your life in the changing of the season. So this is the type of the method that uh, the another mentioned in his nazm. قال فوائد الأمثال فوائد الأمثال What, you know, some of the benefit of the West uh, uh, al He's saying here, قال, some of his benefit that it has an impact of the self more than the words, like someone telling you something, uh, speech, uh, it does not have an impact, an effect like the example. Because the example, subhanAllah, go deep to the heart the example give you a whole image, a whole perspective, who keep you thinking. The example, short, concise, uh, well structured, and have a lot of like a whole scene. So every time you remember Hayat al Dunya, you have the whole scene of this vegetation who turn yellow to die and is gone. That is the life. That is the life. Um, when the, the example 
is uh, is uh, meant to threaten. For for example, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala given the example of the the disbelievers, uh, and how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala disgracing them. The example comes to make that uh, disgrace more hurtful, um, uh, more like have more effect. For example, uh, look the example saying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to punish them in hellfire. But to give the detail that the skins will change every time that burn, that subhanAllah will keep in the mind someone cannot get rid of it. But someone is saying, you know, they're going to be in hellfire. Okay, hellfire, you know. But that كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّنَّاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا SubhanAllah. Every time the skin are burned, we change a new skin that every time is keep coming back to the mind is not going to get, the mind cannot get rid of it. It's so strong. And that's the type of the mithal that it does, subhanAllah, striking vivid image to give more effect. So one of the main examples called reminding at to remind people, make them remember. Second, al was to incite people, inspire them, encourage them. al التذكير, to reflect for ponderation, for reflection. Uh, another benefit is to to make uh, you know the meaning to be closer to the mind to be understood and clarified by by images by scenes by examples and one of the greatest you know, or, or the greatest of the benefit is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Ankabut, Ayah 43, وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ And those examples, we give it to the people, and only the people of knowledge comprehend it. Surah Al-Ankabut, Ayah 43. Surah Al-Ankabut. Ayah 43. And Surah Al-Ankabut is the Ayah, Surah number 29. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And such are the parables we set forth for mankind, but only those understand them who have knowledge. And these examples we present to the people, but none will understand them except those of knowledge. Uh, any question? So these are the method in the Quran. If I'll come back to uh, to our uh, so 154 to 158, this is what we have covered. The next chapter is Aqsamu al Qurani. Aqsamu al Qurani. أقسام القرآن So what meaning of aqsam? Aqsam has uh, the meaning of aqsam, it means 
from qasama from qasama is to divide or to distribute or to put into categories and aqsama from taking an oath or swear uh, or taking an oath so this is from al qasamu al qasamu jam'u aqsamin ay from oath from oath from al half al yamin so al qasamu al half al yamin they have the same the same meaning the same meaning so in the quran you see many uh, places in the quran where there is al qasam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear for example wa shamsi wa duha wal duha wal lay um fa wa rabbika la najma annahum ajma'in all of them are qasam all of them are qasam فالقسم كما قلنا why they call it يمين يمين is right the يمين is the right why they call it يمين وأيمان because the Arab before when they going to take an oath they hold the hand the right hand كان أحد يأخذ بيمين صاحبه عند التحالف when they're going to agree on something and they promise and they make their commitment with the right hand. So they say, Yameen. The disbeliever, they used to make qasam by their father and their gods. But when something in tremendous, the mushrikeen, when it's big and tremendous, they make qasam by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala, wa aqasamu بالله جهد أيمانهم وأقسموا and they swear by Allah جهد أيمانهم you know like in 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 the الجهد here to signify to signify I mean to to tell us that they have it with the with full sincerity like with all their strength they give their قسم وأقسموا بالله جهد أيمانهم طيب. I think we'll I will read the the part of the نظم and then I'll will will start the the التحفة بإذن الله تعالى. قال وإن تريد أن تعرف الأقسام كي لا تكون جاهلا ملاما and if you want to know the أقسام the أقسام as we mentioned the meaning and the plural of قسم كي لا تكون جاهلا ملاما so someone will not be ignorant and blamed فهي التي تراد باليمين فهي التي تراد باليمين so this قسم it means like the yameen the oath الحلف فهي التي تراد باليمين وصيغة اليمين في المبين بالفعل ثم مقسم عليه ومقسم به أضف إليه I will stop here صيغة اليمين صيغة اليمين to say أقسم آه صيغة اليمين في المبين I mean في المبين when you state the full قسم when you state the full قسم because there's figure of speech as we're going to study it there's different style of قسم so how someone you say when someone make قسم you say أقسم بالله آه على so here we have three parts قال بالفعل الفعل هنا الفعل هو القسم فعل القسم أي أقسم أقسم قال بالفعل ثم مقسم عليه ومقسم به أضف إليه تعد الفعل له بالباء تعد الفعل له بالباء أي تعد أقسم بالله الباء هي باء التعدي هنا أقسم بالله ف 
the just I'll, I'll do this so as sigh al asliya as he call it mubin as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah al an'am ayah 109 wa aqsamu billahi jahda aymanihim so al aqsamu is the fact so this is whole sentence is qasam al fi'lu aqsimu mutaaddiyan bil ba ila al muqsim bihi al muqsim bihi is allah i'm swearing by allah i swear aqsimu ba by allah is al muqsim bihi ala al muqsim alayh so we have three you know al fi'lu Muta'addin bil ba'i, the fa'al, the verb, uqsimu, I swear, by, ba, then comes al-muqsimu bihi. So the one muqsimu bihi, the one that I'm going to swear by, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that al-halfu la yakunu illa billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man halafa fal yahlaf billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he swear with, Whatever he will, as we're going to mention it, inshallah, in this chapter. Wal muqsimu alayh is the thing that you are swearing, that you are holding off to not do, or you're going to commit to do. Uqsimu billahi ala an af'ala katha. Uqsimu billahi that I swear by Allah that I'm going to do this. I swear by Allah I will never, uh, you know, for example, say, do you? Don't bother this person, say, swear by Allah, say, I swear by Allah that I will ne never bother again this brother, for example. I swear is the fact, by Allah, ba al muta'addi, Allah al muqsimu bihi, I will not bother again this brother, al muqsimu alayhi. Wada. And then uh, we're going to have example from the Quran and we'll continue with it later ta'ala. This uh, part, inshallah, next time bi By the way, uh, Brother Ibrahim will let you know. Uh, depends on the schedule uh, and on the competition. Uh, there's a national Quran competition in Minneapolis next week. And uh, Sheikh Walid Hafizahullah invited me to be one of the judges in, uh, in the Quran. So uh, he will be coming back from uh, trip uh, this coming week. And uh, the competition will be starting, I think, on, on Friday. So we don't know exactly the uh, uh, the schedule. So, uh, if inshallah we might not, it depends on the schedule, so we let you know. If I will be like uh, uh, in, in the judging at that time, so I will not be able to be here. But uh, to let you know that uh, we would like you to mark your schedule for the Dawr al Ilmiya. This is intended, Dawr al Ilmiya is done uh, in collaboration with. Uh, Masjid Al-Aman, the, uh, the university, with the Masjid Al-Aman, insha'Allah. It's going to be 10 days. 10 days of intensive learning, Dawra Ilmi in the traditional way. Insha'Allah, we'll have, we're going to prepare the mutun that is going to be uh, studied. It's going to be after Dhor to Asr, and then we'll give the ijazah bi for those who attend. And it's going to be also extra credit for you and last uh, uh, we did it the first time in english last week uh, last <laughs> last year we give the ijaza as an attendee's ijaza but we specify whoever who want to have the credit he has to take an exam on it but this year inshallah we'll find a way that the ijaza will be given only those who attend the whole thing and then credit will be given of course with with a small uh, kind of, uh, I will not say exam, but for someone to to prove that he was there and that he understood what is being, uh, you know, uh, taught. So this is going to be part of our mahad, part of our mahad. So please mark your schedule. Um, if you cannot make it uh, all, so at least you can make few days. The rest you can see it online. Uh, it's not going to be an exam, but this is an extra credit for you, for especially for the people, for our people of the Mahad, insha'Allah. It's going to be a topic that you already know, but having them in, uh, review them through Mutuns, uh, it will be great. Last uh, year we have, I think, four Mutuns, and alhamdulillah, we had 
the metin uh, back to the to the authors um, the silsila back to the author we have Ibn Abi Zayd al Qairawani uh, he is muqaddima for uh, the aqidah uh, we have uh, part of the book of the Sa'ada of Ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah and Nudham also we have it very short in uh, the science of the Quran and we have Al-Bayquniya fi Mustalah al-Hadith and Alhamdulillah we complete them all and uh, so it's very uh, important for all the students inshallah to attend this Dawra Ilmiya bi so even if we will have off uh, next week which is as I said depends on the schedule but please mark your schedule. It's going to be starting August 1st to August 10th, inshallah. From Asr. So, which is the time when everyone leave his work for those who work. You know, small snack and inshallah, jihad for the sake of the knowledge. Huh? It's only 10 days, inshallah. There's one who's gonna happening in with uh, Sheikh Walid Dar Farooq in Arabic. Uh, that's uh, we're trying to not overlap the time, but I think the last days because of the trip of the Hajj will be happening uh, just uh, two weeks after that. And then uh, we had to do it at that time. I will check exactly the time uh, on the flyer, inshallah. So which is we are in break for a few minutes to start the Tuhfa al I will give you this information. Break in class, okay. Incidents. Type. Uh, yeah, August 1st to August 11th. It might be August 10th because we were thinking to have a day off. Uh, it depends on the, on the ongoing of uh, the sharh and uh, the student. It's either we take one day off or maybe have 11 days, so it depends. Last uh, uh, year, I think we extended with one day to finish all the books. Alhamdulillah. So this is be part of the Mahad, okay? Inshallah. It's gonna start on Wednesday and finish on Sunday, inshallah. So Wednesday, Thursday, and then we have weekend and then go to the next next weekend on Sunday. Oh he's gonna be part of it. So it's going to be everyone, if people, they only come on Sunday, they come to the Musalla because we want to like more traditional way. So it's going to be the classes being this, the, the Mahad will be this intensive learning session. So uh, targeting mainly the student of the Mahad and then open for everyone else for, for knowledge, which is what the case before. You find, uh, you know, halakat of, uh, you know, uh, being taught and for the student uh, and uh, many people who come and join and listen and everything. So just to encourage people to have knowledge and to make it like kind of celebration of knowledge uh, during the summer and uh, a good, uh, inshallah, sunnah that we start, especially in English, for it, which is going to be the second time done. Uh, for example, if you went to Medina and uh, right and Mecca, so they have the, the scholars who give their lectures. Some of the lecture is part of like, you know, daily lectures. So we have like going through a book. So they have, you know, student who register student. But many of the visitors, they come and sit and they listen and they benefit from it. So that's in that uh, type of setup that we, we, we do the, the Dawrah. So these classes will be these classes actually. Inshallah. Any question or not? 